Hello, David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. What are we talking about today? Today, we are talking about a top seven James Bond jackets. It's pretty simple. It's from the Daniel Craig era. We'll get to the other Bonds soon enough, but today we're focusing on Daniel Craig and the top seven jackets. Now, I understand this is incredibly personal. It's unique. This is my opinion. So there's going to be a lot of disagreement out there. There's going to be a lot of slapping on the back, congratulating me for getting it just right and everything in between. But we are going to be talking about the top seven. There's a couple of things I'm basing this top seven on. Uh, number one, it's how important I think it is to the Bond connection. And that has a lot to do with how the jacket is seen and used in the movie. So we're going to be talking about that. To me, it's also kind of a fashion style statement. Like, do I like this jacket? Will I use this jacket? The other one is utility. How functional is this jacket? Can I really wear it in the real world? And then it's just personal faves. Which one do I tend to gravitate to? Which one's my go-to? So let's start. And first of all, this is not going to be one of them. This is my good friend over here from Billy Reed. You know it. It's the Bond jacket from Skyfall. I think most of you probably own a version of it if you don't know own this version. But to me, that's a coat. All right, so we are going to keep coats out of this to really focus on jackets. So let's start with number seven. Number seven is the Y3 jacket from Quantum of Solace. So let's first talk about when we see this in the movie. Total badass moment. Bond has gotten into a fight with Mr. Slate. Big knife fight. Uh, one of the most amazing hand-to-hand, -hand, I think, in any of the Bond movies. And sure enough, he's victorious. He goes into the closet. He's bleeding. He ties off his arm from a, from a wound. And then he grabs this jacket. He puts it on. He looks totally badass in it. And then he goes out, jumps on a motorcycle, a la Steve McQueen, and then boom, uh, he's right back at it. So he's got this jacket in a lot of the scenes. He has it on the boat scene. He wears it a lot. So why doesn't it rank higher in the whole scheme of things? So to me, this is why it doesn't rank higher. First of all, take a look at the arms. They're pretty long. And for those of you that own the Y3, they have long arms. Now you could say that it's because you need to be riding a motorcycle. The fit is fine. It's a little loose for me. You can see how it looks in the back. Um, this is a size small, so it gives you an idea of the fit of this, but I'm just not crazy about this. Now maybe it's because it's a black jacket. I don't, I don't tend to wear uh, black jackets or black shirts. Um, I have a couple black sweaters that I go to, but for some reason this jacket just didn't connect with me. I like the style. It's it's pretty, you could see that it's, it's conservative. I mean, there's nothing uniquely uh, too avant-garde about this. It's not that it's a little too fashionable, but again, I had to go with my gut. This is my opinion. The way it fits, the way it looks, it just doesn't make my top five but it's firmly planted in number seven, and that's not a bad thing. Who doesn't like the scene when we revisit Bond in Skyfall and he's been enjoying death? So we've got to go for number six, and number six has got to be the Levi's jacket. Now, what I love about this Levi's jacket is the scenes from the movie to which they take place. Bond is in Turkey. He's recuperating. He's on the beach at a bar. We've got that incredible Bond lifestyle moment when he's drinking the McAllen uh, and he sees the news report. It's great. Then he's back in M's apartment and he's wearing this particular jacket. And then even when he goes to the new MI6, he's wearing the jacket. So it gets a lot of screen time. It's totally badass because it looks rough and tumble like Bond does at the moment. So it really captures that particular look. So as I wear it, I love the fit of this. I mean, it fits so nicely. It's got um, a little bit longer than that crop crop looked, but you can see if I go like this, how it kind of comes up. But the fit of this is great. The armholes are nice and high. Let's get up a little closer and personal. Hello. Um, you can see some of the wearing on this. I mean, this really has an interesting type of wearing and boy, is it soft. Strangely enough, because I have worn this, it's not the one that I go to, but as I was doing this vlog, I thought, why do I not wear this more? This is a fantastic jacket. It's super comfortable. It's, it's actually pretty tough. It's, it's pretty repellent. You can see the way the back fits. 
is very nice. So I, I like the way it looks. You can even do that, you know, little collar pop thing where it kind of comes up and it doesn't look too uh, crazy. Goes with a lot of different things, but I kind of asked myself why I don't do this more, but because of that reason, it's got a badass moment in a Bond film. It looks great. It feels great. I think it's got that kind of traditional heritage type of look, but I just don't grab it enough. So it didn't make it higher, but it still makes it in the top seven. So that ain't bad. All right. Number five on the list is the Spectre matchless jacket. Now I've got to talk about this as it looks in the movie. I mean, when we saw those sneak peeks of Bond walking through Morocco in the movie, he was wearing that blue V-neck, those cool chinos, uh, those amazing desert boots, and lo and behold, he had this unbelievable kind of uh, off-white beige, vanilla, whatever color you want to call it, jacket. And we all went, want, want, and yes, I wanted it too. And then we found out that it was matchless. And I'll tell you, it was one of those things where in the movie, as he's wearing it and watching him wear it, I'm like, Bond is wearing something that I really connect to, which is these these great kind of light colored suede, which look like they'd be a horror for like wine and chocolate and anything else that you might be eating. But boy, are they worth it. And I think they get better with time. So besides the application in the movie, I love the way this jacket fits. This is one of my go-to jackets, which is why it makes it so high up the list. First of all, the fit. We've got to talk about the fit. It's nice and trim, but it's not too trim. It's got lots of room. If I zip it up, you'll see it's got um, kind of a, a shacket type of look on it. It's super light. We're going to get in nice and close so you could appreciate the suede here. Um, it's beautiful. Oh my, oh my. The details, the softness of the suede, it just feels great. Feels great in the shoulders. You know I've got some wide shoulders, so it fits it well, but then it cinches down here. Let's take a look at the back. You can see the back, the armholes are really nice, but I love the way this fit. It looks like something that you could have pulled out of a vintage store from the 60s now. Not the 60s, more like the 70s. 70s into the early 80s, but then it comes back into a Bond movie. Yes, please, I'll take one, and I do. And I wear it quite a bit um, with something very similar to this, a V-neck and some jeans. I pair it with a lot of different things. Uh, it's one of those things going out in the evening on a, on a weekend. It just feels great. And I'll tell you, I, I've stopped babying it. Um, you can maybe see around some of the cuffs, it's getting a tiny bit worn, a little discoloration, but I'm okay with this because I want this uh, to grow with me. I want this to be on my journey with me. So to me, it has to rank relatively high just because of all those reasons. Okay, number four on the list comes right back to Skyfall. And we've got to talk about the barber jacket. This barber jacket, I think a lot of you own, and why not? Let's talk about the scene from the movie to which we actually see this jacket. Uh, some people unkindly call it the Home Alone moment. I think it's amazing. You know, Bond is back in his uh, heritage, in his roots, in his backyard. Literally, he's in the house that he grew up in. And the baddies attack. Uh, he even has a certain amount of training with Kincaid with the shotgun. What did you say you did for a living? What I love about this jacket is the practicality. I mean, come on. The reason if you do own it, or you were even thinking about it, is the wearability. Two buttons later, you are out the door. Let's come on up close. You've got this incredible wax cotton in here, uh, lined in a foil so it keeps you warm on the dampest days. It keeps you dry. This is a coat that you can wear in the rain, in the muddy weather. You can see the fit on this is sleek, but for those of you that like a little bit of room, you could have gotten it a little bit roomier. Here's the back on it. What I love about this is the pockets, the sleeves. Everything is detailed to the nines, and it's really specific in the way it was designed because this company, Barber, has been around for a long time. And this is what they do. They, they take the nip out of the UK weather and they've brought it here all over the world. And many of you own this jacket or something similar for that very reason. From a style standpoint, I think it's very traditional, but classic. This will never go out of style. I could, I could give this to my son and he could pass it down to his son and so on and it would never go out of style. Plus, it's that invisible Bond moment that we all know. I've seen so many of you dressed up in it and it's immediately identifiable. Maybe you've seen someone else and you give that invisible nod just in case they, uh, 
they're a Bond fan. But for me, this easily makes it into the higher ranking because of that very reason. All right, number three brings us to Austria. And we've got the Solden jacket, the Tom Ford Solden jacket that I think a lot of you connected with because immediately it looks like something that is vintage and yet familiar all at the same time. Let's think about it in the movie. Bond arrives at the Hoffler Clinic and uh, immediately sees Madeline Swan. He's got quite a few action scenes there. He's got some really funny scenes with Q um, and the digestive enzyme drink. And then all of a sudden he's off to the races. He's in the airplane, he crashes. Then he has that really caustic moment with uh, Madeline Swan. It sees quite a bit of screen time, but I think where this ranked higher, at least for me, in my opinion, was the practicality and the way it looks. All right, I can't tell you how many times I've worn this jacket. Yes, out in the wild, for reviews, in these vlogs, you've seen me in this a lot. And there's a reason for it. First of all, I love the way this fits. Let's take a look at the back. It feels great. A lot of that has to do with the wool. The wool gives really well. Um, the sleeves fit perfectly. The wool itself, um, it's not that hard boiled wool. It's very, very soft and yet it keeps the chill off. Now, would I wear this in zero degree Fahrenheit weather? No, I would not. Maybe I'd wear it under a, a heavier coat as a layer, but I'll tell you when it wants to keep the chill off um, in anywhere from 30 degree to about 50 even, this is perfect. The wool lets it breathe, but this nice padding also keeps the chill off. I love when it's zipped up to the top. Again, it gives that sleek look. I've worn this with everything from jeans to chinos to gray slacks, you name it, because it still looks tailored enough that I can wear this in some of those nicer moments. Give it a little zip and the collar stays nice and clear. You can see some of the rib details that you've come to know and love. And you know, I get it. You know, Tom Ford has really traveled the journey. I believe he may even be traveling farther with us. Um, we'll have to see. We'll watch for those photos coming out. But I had to rank this relatively high because the connection in the movie, um, I do like that scene from the movie, scenes kind of strewn together, but I love this piece. And I have to tell you, even more than the barber one, I grab it and go. I'm out the door. I connect with it very easily. It's not on this mannequin all throughout the year. I wear it quite a bit. Um, so it had to rank relatively high. And I have a feeling it ranks pretty high with you as well. All right, we're getting close to the number one, but number two on my top seven James Bond, Daniel Craig era jackets has gotta be my good old friend here, the Armani jacket. Now the Armani jacket, remember, comes back to Casino Royale. Uh, we see it for the very first time when Bond is in Miami. He goes to Body Worlds. Um, there's that incredible uh, little cat and mouse game with uh, Demetrius and uh, then he heads to the airport. He's got some incredible scenes there, incredible stunt action. This is a screen used one. I've got a lot of heart for it, but during that scene, there are some amazing moments where you see Bond in action. And to me, this jacket is showing you the new rough and tumble James Bond that Daniel Craig portrays, but he's, we're also getting a really look at high fashion. It is Armani after all. You've heard all the stories about this jacket, so I don't have to go into too many details, but let's talk about it just a little bit about why else I like it besides its connection to the movie. Okay, so from a functionality standpoint, I guess you could argue that, you know, this lambskin and you can see that it is incredibly soft, buttery soft, unbelievably soft, did I mention soft, lambskin, is not the most practical thing. Um, I would wear it out, I have worn it out. Would I be going through the um, brushes and the bushes with this? No, of course not, because it's an Armani leather jacket. But um, the way it fits, I love the way it fits. It's got that kind of short cropped look. You could see where it falls, uh, especially in the back. It fits to the nines, it's super comfortable. Honestly, I don't even feel like I'm wearing a jacket. This thing is so light. And by the way, one of the things I really like about this um, from a jacket standpoint is the zipper works really well. I know it's a little thing, but check how nice and cropped this looks. Very 2006, but 
From a jacket standpoint, I love the way this fits. This is my style of jacket. I'll come in a little bit close so you can see some of the details. Uh, the pockets are very unique. It's got that four pocket look that everybody uh, just seems to want to connect to even from a, a replica standpoint, but nothing beats this. Well, that's not true. One thing beats this. All right, drum roll please. My number one choice for my favorite Daniel Craig era jacket is the Tom Ford Harrington from Quantum of Solace. Here it is in all its glory. And this is from the rerun project that Tom Ford was nice enough to do for some of us fans. Why do I like this? Well, let's talk about the movie use. Again, you see Bond in one of these incredible moments with Felix Leiter. It's one of the reasons why we love the relationship between Bond and Felix, the way they connect in that bar. It's subtle, the dialogue is good, he looks total bad, badass in it. Then he escapes from the, the SWAT guys that break in there, but that's not enough because the jacket then travels to where Dominic Green and everybody are out in the desert, and then that huge scene ensues Towards the end, you see Bond with Dominic Green at the end, leaving him off. He's still wearing that jacket, even when he says goodbye to Camille. This jacket sees an incredible amount of airtime in that movie, plus it harkens back to what we know and love about traditional Harrington jackets. All right, so I'm wearing it right now, and I'll come in a little bit close. Again, like I said, tradition, tradition, tradition. The way it looks, what Tom Ford didn't do is they didn't over-engineer the fashion aspect of it. It is a Harrington in every sense of the word. You can see the back. You can see some of the details. By the way, it's over here. Check this out if I can get it on camera. Tom Ford, David Zeritsky, Bond 22. Hello. It's those little details, but it's comfortable. Um, Again, it is something about this jacket and maybe Quantum of Solace in general, where I just feel Quantum of Solace captures all of those indelible, what I call real world Bond moments. What I mean by real world is, I'm not talking stunts or the problems he gets into, but can you wear those clothes in the real world? And the answer is yes. I grab this jacket all the time. It's the one that I run out in uh, during the spring. It's my go-to, quite frankly. And so it has to, capture my number one because of all those reasons. The connection to the movie, the practicality, the traditional aspect, and my opinion that it's just my go-to jacket. You probably have something similar, if not the same exact thing, so you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, this was a quick top seven, something we wanted to give, give to you, especially going into uh, the uh, mid warmer months. Uh, it's jacket weather right now, so you could take advantage of it. Maybe soon we'll start seeing some Bond 25 jackets that we can start to connect and emulate with. But anyway, for now, this has been David Zeritsky for the Bond experience. I'd love your opinion. What's your favorite jacket? Do you agree? Disagree? Which one do you go to? Write it in the comments. We'll talk to you real soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.